following season, 2013, 55 games in the season right before. Really not playing. He throwing me in there garbage minutes and, you know, throwing me in and out, you know. And what, what people don't know, Matt, and you know this, and they, they was doing this to Carmelo. I'm not saying I'm on Carmelo level. But scores and guys that play off rhythm and stuff, you can't throw them in four minutes in the third quarter and expect them to do an instant spark. You can't throw them in two minutes in the fourth quarter and expect them to throw an instant spark, like always be ready and expect them to come out and play well. That's the situations they throw you in to make you look like you can't play. This is what they did Melo and got him out the way. So Pop was doing that to me the whole season. You know, he'll throw me in there. You know, I never know when I'm going to play, you know, and – it was different from the year before. You know, I just came off playing well in the finals, in the West Conference Finals. Mm -hmm. So he was doing that all year, and I didn't understand, you know, why I wasn't just getting the opportunity to play. I was playing great in practice. I was busting my teammates' ass in practice. You know what I'm saying? You can ask Kawhi, they'll tell you. I had no reason not to be playing. The way he was playing me and the spurs he was playing me, I couldn't play my best best basketball because I was, I'm was i a rhythm, rhythm guy. Timing. You know what I mean? And, and, and it didn't look good who, for a while. Who were you playing behind at the time? That was a young Kawhi. We Danny like Green. Danny Green. Yep, and Ginobili. Ginobili. So we're back in Oklahoma. I'm playing thing. behind all of them. Mm -hmm. Now, I remember you hit me on the bus. We was in New Orleans, and I seen you had just got released. I'm like, what the fuck? Right mm -hmm. before the playoffs. Yeah, I, you know, that shit was crazy, man. I remember coming out of practice. I had a great practice. You know how I practice. Mm -hmm. If I hit a three on somebody, bitch, you know what I'm saying? But it ain't personal. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Get your ass up. That's how I'm talking. Right. I'm probably the only person in Spurs history that practiced like that. You know what I'm saying? Maybe Mario Elliott or somebody like that. You know what I'm saying? But I'm the only one in Spurs history that practiced like that. Tim was Tim loved it. Tim Duncan loved it. He loved the way I played and all that. You know what I'm saying? It scared people at, at the time. We had a point guard on the team. His last name was DeColo. He loved me. You know what I mean? But I hit a shot on him for, to, for game win at practice. And I was like, get up, bitch. And Pop, like, I saw it. He didn't say nothing, but I saw his face like, come on, Jack. Like... But this is just how I play. I wasn't playing much, so my games was, was practices. Practice, right. You know what I mean? And this is just how I played. So I'm walking in the locker room. You know, I remember having, I'm having a great I'm feeling good. You know, uh, Tim coming and messing with me, like, great practice, boy. Da, da, da. And as I'm in the locker room, one of the trainers come, like, Pop want to talk to you in the mm, film room. That's like getting called to the principal's office. But I'm not feeling that. I'm thinking he's going to tell me, great practice. You know, I'm going to play you, <laughs> da, 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 da. Like, get your shit together. You know what I'm saying? Right. That's what I'm thinking. Right. I go in there. As soon as I go in, I see his face. Killed my whole mood. I wanted to just kick him in his fucking face. When I saw his face, I just wanted to kick the <laughs> shit out of him because I know this is not going to go how I expect to. You know, I expect it to. I sit down. He, he hit play on the film screen. He got all the highlights of me fucking up in the last three to four games. My worst possessions. <laughs> Jack, you're not but playing with... But this where you said he was throwing you in and out and you didn't have no yeah, rhythm. No yeah, yeah, yeah. He found my worst possessions in life he probably found him when I was four years old, the worst possessions ever, and played him on the tape for me. And was like, uh, Jack, you haven't been playing well. Duh, duh, duh. I know you had a great practice today. I want to bring um, Danny Green and the Genova and the rest of these guys in, and I want you to admit that these guys are better than you because I'm going to play them going to the playoffs. He brought them in the office? No, he brought me in there and told me he was going to bring them in, the, in uh -huh. there for me to say that. This one thing about Pop, the smartest coach I've ever played for, He's calculated. Everything he does is calculated. I know this guy. I respect him too much. You know what I mean? I, I can never say nothing bad about him. He gave me my opportunity to win. All that stuff. I love Pop. He was like a father to me those years I was in San Antonio. But he knew what my response was going to be before he asked me that question. Mm -hmm. So when he told me to, that he was going to bring the team in and wanted me to admit that Danny Green and, and, and Ginobili was better than me in front of the whole team to help their confidence going into the playoffs, I looked at him. I said, Pop, you know I ain't going to say that. You might as well give me the rest of my money. I'm getting the fuck up out of here. And I got up and walked out. Now listen, I got up and walked out. As I walked out, Tim, I see Tim on the, on the table. And he was like, Jack, what's going on? I'm like, man, I ain't worried about it. I'll holler at you later. You know what I'm saying? As, as I walk out. So this is how I, I always say, I know how smart Pop is, and I know that everything he does is calculated. As I'm at home going to the house, I get a call from T Mac. T Mac flying in town, asking me, well, what's going on? He flying in, San Antonio flying him in. He coming in right now. So they had already was bringing T Mac in. So he was trying to set up a way for you to, to, to let me down easy. So, so he, wanted me, he, he wanted me to set myself up. 
to by cut, saying that in front of the team. To cut yourself. Right. You know what I'm saying? And but but like I said, Pop knew the relationship we had. He had so much love for me. He couldn't come to terms with just saying, Jack, I gotta release you. You know what I'm saying? I don't I don't think the relationship we have, I don't I don't think he wanted to do that. And that's why he tried to, he put me in that position. To cut yourself. Because he knew I was gonna cut myself. Fuck no, I ain't saying I'm mean, not to this day. <laughs> Deontay Wilder, till this day, I ain't saying nobody better than me. You gotta prove it. You know what I'm saying? And um it ended bad. It ended bad. And they ended up losing to Miami. That's good for their ass. Because I would have got that rebound. You know what I'm saying? And the way I feel about Ray Allen, I would have made sure I locked his ass up. You know what I mean? So, but you know, shit happened for a reason. I don't even think, I don't even think they played, really gave, gave T-Mac a chance to see nah, what he can do. I remember that. He, didn't, he was in and out briefly. But it was fucked up. You know what I'm saying? Because I was, and then he did that where I couldn't sign with another NBA team. Oh, yeah, no. You know, right for the that. playoffs where I could. So, he didn't want me to come back to hunt him. And I don't blame him because that was what was going to happen. I was going to come back and bust his ass. And he knew that. You know what I mean? But that, it was just fucked up how it happened. And, and, that, and I never played in the NBA after that. It's a cold business because that the, the business of the business behind the scenes is dirty. You know what I mean? And then it almost, without knowing the whole story, you know, Pop is what he is. You yeah. know, are going to be arguably one of the greatest coaches, if not the greatest coaches ever. So if you can't make it work with Pop, pe people really start thinking you're a problem. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So then, like you said, after that, you never play in the NBA again. Yep, I, I, that little bullshit still with the, a month, a couple of weeks with the with the Clips, and that was it. But anytime you get cut right before the playoffs, that looks bad to every team. You know what I'm saying? That looks bad to every team, and and to be cut from the Spurs. Yeah, that's that's right before the playoffs. You know what I'm saying? And 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 I think Matt, that's what hurt me more than anything. The relationship me and Pop had, like, as smart as he is, this is ruining me, Pop. Like. Regardless how you feel about me, what you're trying to do to win games, this is, this is fucking up my career. You know what I mean? And I, I don't think he never thought about that. You know what I'm saying? But I, but I, I, I heard somebody ask him about it, and he said he regret how he handled that. You know what I'm saying? Which, which I respect because, right. you know, I had a lot of game left. You know, mm -hmm. I had to go punish the big three the next couple of years because, I, you know, if Pop say you don't belong in the league, trust mm -hmm. me, a lot of teams going to be like, you don't belong in the league. It's tough. Tough way to go out.